Thanks very much. <clears throat> so, hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation to give this talk. And I can confirm that uh, Moderna has not been involved in the, any of the slides. So that's a nice thing. And um, I'm very happy to be at this conference. So I've heard a lot about it uh, from colleagues. And it's nice to be here for the first time. So what I'm going to be talking to you about is the RSV epidemiology and burden of disease in older adults. And um, so I'll start with the epidemiology of RSV, just briefly go through that, and then uh, present uh, burden of disease estimates in older adults um, in, from three different perspectives, and then move to the conclusions. So first start with the epidemiology of RSV. And I think the first thing that can be said and should be said is that um, the epidemiology of RSV is uh, better defined in children than in adults. And that's why I kind of think you have to start with the uh, in children. So it's the most common cause of acute lower respiratory tract infections. Um, and there's been a, uh, a number of studies which have looked at the worldwide burden of RSV in children, uh, most recently in 2019. And so they come up with uh, 33 million RSV-associated ALRI episodes. And then they've also got various estimates for um, hospital admissions, hospital deaths, and overall deaths, with RSV-attributable deaths um, at a roughly 100,000 for the whole world. And another important point to be said is that 60 to 70 percent of children Will be in, uh, children will be infected before the age of one. So in terms of RSV and the elderly, I think it was not so well uh, understood, and, uh, um, but it, it, we're getting there. Um, and it, it's also turn, turning out to be an important respiratory infection in the elderly. And one of the first studies to show that was a paper by Maria Zambon in The Lancet, where they looked at uh, surveillance data and they looked at um, positive cases but different age groups and somehow to everybody's surprise they found there was a lot of RSV in the ILI cases in the elderly. Um, there are challenges assessing the uh, burden of RSV in the elderly and one of those is the uh, case definition. So this is from primary care the, and I, I think you could expect it as well that the, the main symptoms differ for children uh, under five and the elderly. I'll come back to this study. Um, and we've just done a study uh, that's looked at the, um, uh, the, uh, the burden of RSV in, in adults. And we calculated the number of hospitalizations in the uh, e EU and UK. Uh, this is a hint to one of the questions which we were asked. And we calculated there were roughly 160,000 hospitalizations per annum pre-COVID, uh, with 92% of those occurring in the elderly, so over 65. There's another piece of information which is important for the elderly, which is sort of gradually coming up at the moment, is that PCR testing uh, may lead to an under-detection of cases in uh, the adults or the elderly. And there's a good review on that in JID, the bottom right paper. The suggestion is, is to extend to uh, sputum and serology um, to get a, a full, to, to, to get the, the best detection in the elderly. So in terms of the epidemiology, so um, RSV is quite similar to it, or very similar to uh, influenza in uh, temperate countries. This is a paper by um, the Edinburgh group which looked at uh, where the timing of the peaks, so at the top it's uh, January and February and the bottom is November and December. And what you see is in the um, temperate countries, um, it's a, similar to influenza, it's in, the, um, uh, in January, February. And then in the tropics, there's less clear seasonality of RSV and of flu. Um, and in the southern hemisphere, it's uh, July, August, September. So I hope that you can see that. So for example, yeah, there's, you can see Argentina and Australia and South Africa in the figure. What's important to be said is that um, influenza or RSV also in large countries, it's not like it affects one country, the country all at the same time. 
There are various studies in the US which have shown that it starts in uh, Florida and then spreads to the rest of the country. And this is data from uh, Brazil, which also shows that it starts actually in the middle of the country and spreads out and ends um, in the southern part of uh, Brazil. And you can see that in, um, in the figure here. So, yeah, in larger countries, it can, can, uh, the timing can vary. Also in Russia, it's a similar situation. Another interesting point about the epidemiology of RSV is that for flu, you have um, influenza B is roughly, if you look at um, many, many seasons, it's between 20 and 25% of cases. Um, and um, so 70 to uh, 75 to 80% are influenza A. Well, for RSV, there's a much better distribution of cases between uh, the type A and B. So that's another interesting difference. Uh, some people have thought of there might be difference in the timing of um, RSV A and B. Um, it's, it was, there was a Chinese study that seemed to study, suggest that in um, Beijing. And when we looked at the data for four countries in, uh, around the world, we couldn't see any difference or clear differences in the timing of um, RSV A versus RSV B epidemics. Another thing which is interesting about the transmission of dynamics of RSV, and there's quite a lot of discussion about um, that the RSV epidemics start in children and then over Christmas and New Year it shifts to the elderly with the mixing occurring at Christmas and New Year. So we've tried to analyze this question using surveillance data. Um, and so the problem with the surveillance data is that not many countries have data in the, the elderly. So we kind of had to limit our, our analysis to the younger age groups. But what we could show in this study was that um, there were changes in the timing or the age distribution of RSV cases through seasons. So, and this was found in all seven countries all around the world, which we looked at. And we could show that um, the, epi the epidemic starts, looks like it starts uh, in the, zero, uh, the one to four year age group and then spreads out. So to the zero to one and the older children, which is an important finding. And we're now going to assess whether we can also see this from the children to the uh, elderly. And we're in the process of collating this data. So this, this paper is, um, has been submitted to your surveillance under revision, but has been presented at, uh, at ResviNet. So in terms of the RSV burden of disease in the elderly, um, I think it's important to say that I, I hopefully people are aware of this uh, burden of disease pyramid with at the top you've got uh, mortality, then you've got ICUs, intensive care unit rates and hospitalizations, and you work your way down into primary care. And then you've got people who, um, who are infected who don't see our doctor. And then you've got people who just, yeah, who just stay at home. And then you've got the uninfected. So in terms of public health, we're actually interested in the severe cases, so in the deaths, hospitalizations, and uh, people who attend uh, medical, get medical attention, so in primary care. And CDC for influenza has developed these lovely uh, pyramids so they say on average there's 12 to 52,000 deaths and then they have a certain number of hospitalizations. This is for flu. And they present this on their website. It's important information to gain, um, to raise information levels and understand the burden of uh, influenza and why it's important to get vaccinated. And they present these updates every winter. This is pre-COVID data. So for example, there are 38 million estimated cases of flu in the country, which is the population of uh, California. And then what you can do is you can compare uh, different winters and um, compare mortality, and you can also then compare viruses, which is also interesting. So for, I, w I wanted to show you this because um, this is what our um, CDC has for RSV, and there's much less information. They do have the estimates uh, for the different age groups uh, and the different, um, the pyramid. So for example, it's 60 to 160,000 hospitalizations amongst adults 65 years and older. So quite similar to, or it kind of fits our band that we've got the one for Europe. 
So what about um, estimating the disease burden of RSV in, in Europe? So we've just, we've initiated for over a couple of years a, a large study uh, looking at the burden of RSV in small children, so zero to five, uh, zero to four. And uh, we started in the winter of 2021-2022. And um, actually the study has been carried out in uh, five countries and will be carried out this winter in uh, France. And two countries have extended this study to the elderly. So what we do is we capture uh, patients at day one when, they, when they're positive. At day 14, we follow them up, and at day 30. And we collect information about the illness and uh, the impact it has. And so uh, this is what that was done in Italy. So that it's a smaller study, 22 GPs are involved. And in the first year, they only had 33 positives. That always happens in the first year. But we're expecting this winter to have many more cases. But what you can already do is compare the two. So it's interesting to compare. So for example, the positivity rate for RSV was much uh, higher in children. Uh, the, as the symptoms were different, but also there were similarities. Uh, the length of sickness was very similar, which I thought was surprising. Hospitalization rates were also similar and uh, the, pers the percentage of people who have an, an extra cons consultation was also similar. So what about the burden in, so, yeah, in, in hospitalizations and death? So this is a recent paper by the group in Nanjing University, and it shows you the typical, um, these are hospitalizations in high-income countries, and it shows the typical U-shaped with the highest rates in the uh, smaller age groups, especially the zero to one, and then it going up as, you, uh, uh, as age increases. So this is the study that we performed where we calculated as part of rescue and then moved on to the PROMISE project, and we estimated the number of um, hospitalizations in ch children and in the adults. And this gives you the summary of what we found. It's the 158,000 hospitalizations per annum, with 92% in uh, adults age 65 and plus. And then we have the rates uh, for different age groups and the proportion of RSV-associated hospitalizations incurring in adults, and uh, it shows you the 92%. And we also, in this paper, present results per country. So if you want to pick up, pull out the, the data for your country, you can do that. What about the um, uh, mortality? So this is a, we don't have data for Europe on, on RSV mortality, at least to my knowledge. So the, there's a, a group in the US which has looked at um, the um, mortality over multiple years pre-COVID. And essentially the big picture is, again, you've got your U-shaped and um, mortality for RSV is higher than for influenza in the uh, zero to one age group. And in the elderly, it's higher for um, uh, influenza than for RSV. So in terms of the next steps, I'm just looking at the time. So uh, we're working on the, for European estimates uh, for hospitalization. We've done that work for hospitalizations in adults and uh, children. We're now uh, extending the analysis to primary care, as I showed you with the ComNet study. Um, we also would like to, where we need to focus is on adults, so in the elderly in primary care, and we also need to focus on deaths uh, or mortality. So that's something which we need to work on in the coming years. And it's good to know that there's a WHO burden of disease working group. There's one for flu and they're planning one for RSV, so we're hoping that this will help improve the uh, burden of disease estimates. So just in terms of conclusions, so there's a general lack of burden of disease estimates for RSV and to a certain extent for influenza in the EU and EU countries. A lot of work is being done to plug these gaps, for example, by the uh, uh, Rescue and Promise Project. Uh, primary care impact is important and then I think there's gonna be a wealth of data coming soon. Uh, hospitalization estimates, they're now available, which is great. And I think there really needs to be a focus on mortality estimates for Europe. Thank you. <clears throat>